of reality. And as we understand God in his goodness and his perfect love and wisdom and purity and grace does not take pleasure in our pain, but is rather right there with us in the midst of it, we will begin to see the key that will enable us to experience suffering, to undergo it and still maintain a passion for life and a passion for God. So the Bible gives us some tools to enable us to manage suffering and to not lose a passion for life and a passion for God because of it. Suffering can be profitable. As I shared previously, it's God's megaphone. And his shouted message is, wake up, wise up, and confess up. But I'm not going to go there. What I want to do before we finish up is have a look at some of the tools that God has given us to deal with it and some of the profitable aspects of it. And I'm not going to go into them in depth because we don't have time. But suffering is profitable. Hebrews 5, 7 to 9 talks about Christ suffering and learning obedience. As I shared before with the illustration with a child, if the child was obedient, there would be no suffering. And sometimes we suffer because we are disobedient. And God trains us through suffering to be obedient, to do that which is right and good, correct and wholesome, that which is profitable for him and for others. Through suffering, we learn obedience. 2 Corinthians 12 gives us the story of Paul who suffered this affliction, this thorn in the flesh. And there Paul learnt to come to the end of his self-reliance. And you know, when you're young and you're strong, when you're fit and you're healthy, when you're handsome and not bald, <laughs> mate, it's easy to handle life and a bit of suffering rolls off your shoulders. But when the body degenerates a little and the suffering begins and does not cease, then we have two choices. <laughs> we can continue to try and rely on the failing arm of flesh and all we're going to experience is deep suffering and impotence and inability to do what we need to do. But we can begin to depend on our God and through prayer and through uh, a yielding to the Spirit of God we can overcome and we can do those extraordinary things that God would have us to do. We're going to talk more about that tomorrow when we look at Christian suffering in depth. Suffering strengthens our faith. 1 Peter 1, 6 and 7 we know the passages, the trial of our faith much more precious than gold. God wants to test our trust in Him. Suffering is profitable in that it matures us. It matures us. James 1, 2-4, which I'm not going to read, but 1 Peter 5, 10. Peter 
really summarizes this whole wonderful maturing work of God this way. The God of all grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after that you have suffered a while. Make you perfect. Establish. Strengthen. Settle you. Oh, that's profitable. <laughs> Maturity is profitable. Suffering brings experience. And experiences can be valuable. Romans chapter 5. Tribulation worketh patience and patience, experience and experience. Hope, I think it goes, and hope maketh not ashamed. See, experience, life experience learned through the school of suffering is profitable. Suffering is profitable in that it enables us to aid others. Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, in chapter 1, and we'll just flick there quickly and have a look. 2 Corinthians 1. Blessed be God, even the Father, verse 3, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy, the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comfort of God. For the sufferings of, sorry, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which ye also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Suffering, the endurance of suffering, the drawing of ability and wisdom from God, matures us so that we can then console and comfort others. And is there not a huge ministry for that? And should not, therefore, we be thankful for the suffering of God which works that in our lives? Suffering also brings a greater experience of the presence of God. And there are many who could testify to that. Often our Christian walk is shallow and superfluous until something happens. And then we begin to seek the Lord. Oh, we hate the pain. But as we seek the Lord in that affliction, His presence becomes so real, so tangible. And that changes our lives. And we praise God for the suffering. And so suffering is profitable, but only from a Christian viewpoint because it makes no sense in a materialistic evolutionist world. And the Eastern religions, well, they can't answer it. It's all just a big, confused, inequitable mess. We can deal with suffering by walking in the resurrection life, Philippians 3, by prayer, Hebrews 4, by the Holy Spirit's enabling, Romans 8, by God's grace, the whole scripture, and by maintaining the correct focus. 2 Corinthians 4, and we'll finish there. Verse 15, all things are for your sakes that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of God redound to the glory of many. Sorry, ground to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen and the suffering and the affliction 
that comes with that temporary fallen condition. But we need to look at the things which are not seen. For those things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are seen, sorry, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Romans 8, Paul has the same thought in mind. In the verse we've already read, I reckon, verse 18, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Only through a Christian worldview, only through a knowledge of the true and the living God can any of the pertinent answers of suffering be answered. Only does the Christian worldview give us an understandable starting point. The fact that it is a product of the sinful, evil nature of man and the fall. Only the Christian worldview give us a hope for the future that one day this temporary suffering will be passed away. And we will enter into a new heaven and earth wherein there is no more sin, no more crying, no more tears, no more death. And that will be our eternal experience because suffering is not a part of the ultimate reality. God's spiritual reality that existed forever, it had no suffering until sin came into the world. And God's eternal reality, which will exist forever, will have no suffering because we will enter into that eternal glory with the pure, the perfect, the righteous, the holy, the good God. And there will be no more sin. And we will praise God for that day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you now and we would ask that you would touch our hearts, help us to see to learn a little of the reality of suffering from your perspective. May these things that we learn, Lord, not quench our fire for life and our passion for you, but Father God, may we indeed realise that we, that suffering has a purpose and that it is, there is a reason for it and that, Father, it is not from you, the great, the loving God, and that there is a solution through it. Oh, Father God, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask that this knowledge of you might indeed kindle and fan into a burning flame a passion for you, our wonderful God. Thank you now. Praise you in your